Hi, I'm Adam. I'm here with my friend Gus on camera at the 2018 Pacific Northwest Lens Summit in beautiful Portland, Oregon. We're gonna go meet with the biggest cinema lens manufacturers in the world, talking about vintage lenses, new technologies, and innovations for large format. Let's go check it out. Here I am speaking with Alex Nelson from Zero Optic, and he's gonna show us some of their specialty products. Yeah, so our, uh, our latest thing right now is uh, rehousing for the Nikon 58mm f1.2 Noct, which was Nikon's kind of flagship engineering feat in the 70s. They designed it for astrophotography. It was, in the 20 years that they made these, they only made about 100 per year. So even before um, they became useful for cinematography, they were still a cult lens, really hard to track down and really expensive when you found them. Now that it's in a PL mount, it's only gonna get harder. <laughs> uh, this is gonna get much more popular now yeah. that people can use them with modern cameras. Yeah, we, uh, we debuted this at NAB last month. Mm -hmm. um, it was designed just as a, a prop, really, to announce our rehousing for the full Nikon AIS line but demand and interest was so great that we've actually decided to run a batch of 20 just of these, and we're down to, I think, one spot left. So they have gone very, very quickly. I can take that off your hands right now. <laughs> Looks great. Looks great. Thank so you. this is a, uh, in a T-stop, what would this be? So this is a T1.3, um, oh, which there are a lot of fast lenses out there that, um, so the rule of thumb is generally that you just add like 0.1 to the stop. So a, a 1.4 should be a T1.5. Not every lens works that way, but this one comes by it honestly. So what are some of the characteristics that make this lens really desirable? It's the, the speed and the combination of that sort of middle long focal length make it a great portrait lens. Um, you put it on a full frame sensor and you get this really creamy sort of medium format separation between your subject, the background, and the foreground. And also just because it was designed for astrophotography, they sort of optimized it to be shot at infinity focus, where many lenses, it's generally set somewhere more in the middle to be a general purpose lens. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this, as you focus closer, it introduces a lot of spherical aberration, which makes for really nice skin tones and, and very soft features. Mm -hmm. um, it's really, really pretty for faces. So special character for this lens. I was thinking when you were saying infinity that it would be a great landscape lens. Right. But you're saying more of a portrait lens. Right. Um, it's It just brings something to um, a face that you don't get from a lot of other lenses, even you know other fast 50s, for example, mm -hmm. uh, because they're designed to be really sharp in that kind of like 6 to 15 foot range. Whereas this is so much further past that. Well, that's fascinating. Can you show us uh, another one that I'm, I'm personally very curious about? Sure. Which is the Neo Baltar. Yes. Uh, we have we've been working with uh, Brian Caldwell, who is sort of the lens genius of, uh, of his generation. He mm -hmm. used to do a lot of work with Panavision. He designed the Speed Booster with Metabones. Back when he was in grad school in Rochester, came by the uh, original specifications, original drawings for the original Baltars and the original Super Baltars. Rochester being where Bausch & Lomb was based. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So they were basically in the process of gutting the place because they were phasing out their photographic division and they were just chucking stuff in dumpsters. And he knew a couple engineers over there and they said, you know, listen, we, we saved this stuff from the trash heap basically, do you want it? And that turned out to be really serendipitous because now he's able to remanufacture these from scratch from the original specifications. I heard that the Baltars were used on the Godfather. Yes. Um, the, it was a combination of Super Baltars and original Baltars. I know Gordon Willis really liked the 40 from the original Baltar set. The Supers, it went from 35 to 50. So he, he used a mix of them, but they, they complement each other very well. They have very similar imaging characteristics, similar coatings. Um, mm. Gorgeous on a digital sensor. How would you describe some of the characteristics of the Baltar? What makes them compelling? They're not as aggressively vintage as I think a lot of people might expect. Um, they're a little soft, you know, they, they roll off really nicely from sharp to out of focus. Um, but if you have a point source in the frame, it doesn't just veil over. Um, you get these really nice sort of purple bubbles uh, mm. for each and every optical surface. Mm. So it's, it's really pretty, it's something you can use in a lot of situations without having to flag the lens off, 
where you know lenses that um, more modern lenses where they just do uncoated fronts to kind of give it a vintage appeal are more likely to veil over and lose contrast. Whereas Bausch and Lomb had a lot of scientific products they made. They made a lot of microscope lenses. Yeah. Um, they did a lot of stuff for the government. They did a lot of stuff uh, for the military. So it's nice to see that there's this kind of scientific history in this type of lens that's now being revised for cinema. Right. And, and they actually, um, they used to use a lot of these lenses for different purposes. So even though these were designed for cinema, I've pulled vintage ones out of uh, military reconnaissance housings, out of any number of different purposes that they were built for. Last Bausch & Lomb fact I can remember is that they started as a monocle company. I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> that's really cool, though. Monocles, yeah. Which, I mean, it makes sense, but that's, that's how long they had been around. That's like, I think Lamborghini started by building tractors. Really? Yeah, yeah. so you can find old, old Lamborghini tractors out there. I don't know that we're going to use that. <laughs> you know, but Fair it's enough. cool, but you know, these people, this is great long legacies where these, these companies have, uh, people think that they're just these giant companies that have made this technology, but really they've evolved over 100 years uh, coming from uh, places that we didn't expect them to go from in order to bring us something like this. Yeah. And now there's this um, whole new approach to revising this technology and you're, you're bringing it back and I'm just, I'm tickled pink. I think this stuff is great. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you. Thanks for talking with us.